been about a year and a half since I've gotten this camera. I've been able to use this camera pretty extensively. So we're gonna talk a little bit about it today. And more specifically, I wanna show you guys more footage. I know in my first GX85 video, I didn't show a ton of footage and many people were asking me if they could see footage with it because there's not uh, a ton of beautiful footage online that's shot with the GX85. So I'm going to be displaying quite a bit of footage throughout the whole video. It's been around four and a half years since this camera was released. Four years in the camera realm is quite a bit of time, but this thing still holds up very well. Here are a couple of things that I've been uh, enjoying on this camera and finding quite interesting. When it comes to focusing with this camera, obviously you have manual focus and you have autofocus, but it's still pretty inconsistent. So I don't rely heavily on continuous autofocus, but rather what I've been doing is using a back button focusing. And that's handy specifically for lenses that are focused by wire. Focusing by wire is a little tricky. It's reliant on how fast you turn your focus ring. So when I try to focus slowly and smoothly, it'll take me a minute to get to one focus point to the other. Back button focus is really nice when I want to lock onto something and just keep the focus right there. It doesn't track it, but it just keeps it in that same plane. So the next thing I want to talk about is the removal of the anti-aliasing filter within the GX85. So you're getting sharper images, but you may have to battle with moiré and aliasing. I have yet to have that problem though, which is really nice. The benefit of that is a sharper image. What I found is the 1080 60p option in this camera is absolutely gorgeous. This camera has been just a daily carry camera. I haven't used it on big productions or even smaller productions. It's mostly just to document everyday life, shoot video, shoot some photo. And so I've tried to keep my setup pretty small, pretty minimal. And so I've been using the 25 millimeter 1.7 and the 12 to 32 millimeter. Panasonic stabilization is some of the best I've ever used in camera. The GX85 is no slouch. It's very comparable to the GH5. I think the GH5 has the upper hand just slightly, but obviously you're paying much more for the GH5. The natural profile is my favorite profile uh, alongside the whole Panasonic camera lineup. I usually shoot negative five on everything except saturation. I keep saturation at negative three. I can always pull back saturation if I want to, and I can always add some if I want to. But I think negative three is a good mix uh, because you don't want to try to reintroduce too much saturation on such a compressed format. That's why I keep it at negative three. It's a good balance straight out of camera, a good amount of saturation. And if I need to, I can either add or subtract some saturation as well. I still have yet to find another camera that does what this GX85 does for this price. And it's perfect to take with you everywhere. Very small, very sleek, and very beautiful. So I just wanted to share those few thoughts with you regarding the GX85. I think it's the best bang for your buck that I know of. Thank you again for watching this video. And I hope to see you next time.